What's happening, Seven Footers gang? This is episode 92, and it is the first episode after the NBA has started. God, it feels good, baby. <laughs> Gerard, how, how exciting. Listen, we're excited, man. The NBA is back. You know, excellent opening night of action. We are ready because now we're, it's time for our annual tradition and it's you know it's happening a little bit sooner than it normally does for us we usually have a little bit of time and the season starts to to do our our special christmas day games preview but nonetheless we are happy because the nba is back so let's get to it that's right and going off what you said it's funny too because right now if you think about it when we're normally doing our christmas day predictions we have already seen these guys in action we kind of know what's going on Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really this is kind of the one hump before the new year Mm -hmm. when things pick up so now it's so slow (laughs) and i'm like okay like i don't know the vibe is just different but we gotta roll with the punches because that's what 2020 is and it's a shit show so here we are Let's talk about this now, guys. The first, we have five games on Christmas Day, which is so exciting. Usually, these are marquee matchups that we've all been dying to see. I, for one, I don't know. They might not be as marquee as they have been in years past. We'll see. And that, with that being said, we're going to talk about excitement factors. We're going to rate these excite excitement games on one to five. Okay. So first game, Pelicans versus Heat. I have to say my excitement factor is definitely at a four for okay. this one. And I'm only saying that because obviously the Heat are the reigning Eastern Conference champions. They just came off an epic run to the NBA Finals. Everybody loves to watch them. They're fun. They re-signed Dragic. Uh, they have Jimmy Butler, big face coffee owner, if you don't know who he is. Uh <laughs> And, you know, they got Bam on a big contract. They got Avery Bradley, Mo Harkless. A lot of exciting new pieces already gelling together on an awesome team. And then you got the Pelicans, which everybody's waiting to see Zion. I feel like we're, we've been waiting for the debut of Zion for years. Like, can somebody just tell me if he's here? Or like, getting a little confusing. Um, you know, and you got the pieces on there. Brandon Ingram. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so. It's going to be a good one. I like these two teams. I think they're great, and it starts off at noon on ESPN. So get ready, guys. Get ready. What you think, Gerard? Mm. What are you going to be watching for on this? So um, the one thing I'm going to be looking at that I'll be looking for is, in particular, the Zion Williamson versus Bam at a bio matchup when those guys get crossed and, and mitched up into, uh, crossed onto each and switched onto each other. Um, they probably and likely won't start the game defending one another, but I'm just curious to see when that does happen. What does that look like? Um, I'm also going to be con- not concerned, but I'm going to be looking at Zion and just his overall fitness and conditioning. He's looked great so far to start right in, in the one game and looked great all preseason. And he's definitely come in came into the season in better shape. So Zion is one we're we'll watching for particularly. Like, I know what the Heat are going to do. I know what they're all about. I want to see what this this uh, Pelicans team and all their new, fun, exciting young guys can do against an exciting team like the Miami Heat. As far as excitement level for me, I'm on a four as well. I like that. Okay. Ultimately, who's going to take it, Pelicans or Heat? I'm going to go with the Heat. Okay, I am going to go with the Pelicans only because, again, back to school jitters, you know, first kind of getting your getting your feet wet out here a couple days after the season started, and also the Heat are coming off of only a 71-day break. <laughs> so I'll give this one to the Pelicans just once. Okay, just, just once. once. <laughs> no more than that now. Can't get crazy up in these streets, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's go to the next game. It's at 2.30, and this one's on ABC, guys. They got the primetime spot, the Dubs, Golden State Warriors at the Bucks. This is going to be a five for me, obviously, with the return of Steph Curry. 
braided Steph Curry. I like it. <laughs> and and he's he's looking good. He's looking fresh. He's looking real healthy off of that. Um, what do you have? That hand injury. Mm-hmm. It feels like yep, it feels, yep. feels mm-hmm. like it was forever ago. That broken hand. But Steph Curry is going to be the thing I will be watching for the it factor for me. Um, and the Bucks are the Bucks. I mean, they got their new quote big three in uh, Drew Holiday um, and Giannis, but. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one to the Bucks though. Ultimately, okay. I am. Okay. But Steph Curry's my hit factor. Excitement level on a five. Uh, for me, excitement level. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna bring it down a bit. I'm gonna go on a three. I'm not not excited. Of course, I'm watching all these games, but it's sort of just like, all right, like, well, because it's more about like you know tre- trepidation or like, okay, are you guys gonna be any different than what you have been, right? We know what the Golden State Warriors situation is. Of course, no Clay Thompson, problematic. Now, and James Wiseman and, and Draymond Green in the preseason, right? Both contracted COVID, right? And so that that was problematic. And we don't know if Draymond will be playing this Christmas Day game um, just because of the, you know, the, the ramp up needed. I know he's been back and practicing and all that. So that'll be something to watch. Look, I, I want to see the one big thing I'll be looking for is Bud, Coach Bud and of, of the Bucks, and his defensive adjustments. With Steph Curry, are you going to do things a little bit differently? Are you going to still play drop, pick, and roll coverage? Or are you going to, like, you know, blitz at the three-point line? What What's happening there? Are you going to do anything differently? Are you going to show us anything differently? So that's what I'm going to be looking for. The butt adjustments, are they going to still give up a bunch of open threes? And, you know, as much as I like Steph and, you know, I, I want to see Wiseman and Oubre and Kenny unlock Andrew Wiggins, the Bucks are an excellent regular season team. I think they are they're just better. Um so I'm going to go with the Bucks. I like that. I like that. Also real quick uh back to Draymond Green. Did you see him in the preseason? Mm-hmm. He dropped some mad weight. <laughs> like he, a different person. Listen, listen, Draymond. I'm like where where's <laughs> Draymond is like, all right, like I got to come back out and remind y'all, like, I'm really good at this basketball thing, you know? I think it was Draymond is last season was, you know, Steph got hurt. Clay was already out. He's like, forget, what, what am I, what am I doing out here? Like, let's, he's like, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I think now they'll, they'll have a renewed sense of vigor. And I think they also, the Warriors want to prove that, look, we still have a, a little bit left in us um, and we can still compete in, in the primes of Steph and Draymond, and ultimately when Klay Thompson comes back, Klay Thompson. So this will this will be interesting to, to see. I, I really I'm really curious to just to see how this iteration of the Warriors do, Warriors do going forward. Completely agree, and I I'm really curious to see individually um, how what kind of year Steph Curry is going to have. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to be great, but I would love to see different facets of Steph Curry's game come out now that he doesn't have. Um, Clay, and he can't really rely on Clay. Not that he, you know, I'm saying he uses him mm-hmm, as a crutch or mm-hmm, anything, mm-hmm. but he, it's just him now. It's your show. Run it, and let's see what you can do. We want to see the lone Steph Curry again. Yeah, he's got the ball in his hands a lot. And all oh, the other thing, too, as I mentioned, d- is he able to unlock Andrew Wiggins, right? Because Andrew Wiggins, we've, I've always said, he's got a ton of talent, but for whatever reason, it's just been that talent that has never materialized into him being a consistent basketball player. Does Kelly Oubre become, you know, really that excellent three and D type of wing, right? Um, and, and again, James Wiseman, the rookie, he's so fascinating. Look, they Steve Kerr likes the potential of what this team can be, but he knows it's going to be a little bit of a of a build before they all get to that point where they're playing high level good basketball again, and you know, a serious contender. But this will be an interesting game. And the other thing, too, about a lot of these teams, Jenna, is early in the season, I think the teams that were not in the bubble, those the, 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 the Delete 8, those teams had a super long offseason, right? So are those teams that didn't play into the bubble, didn't make it to the bubble, and the ones that got knocked out early in the playoffs, are they going to have a little bit more gas in the tank and are they going to be able to start out and be really fresh and jump on teams earlier than they would have in a normal offseason? And Golden State is, in fact, one of those teams. So it'll be interesting to see. Exactly. I mean, hey, I, all I got to say is for those teams, <laughs> those that select few, I don't want to see none of y'all walking back on D. Y'all better be running. <laughs> 
Literally. That's all I got to say. That's it. All right. Let's move on here because we got to talk about a matchup that everyone seems to be so excited about. I think it's also because Kevin Durant is back, but the Nets at the Celtics, 5 p.m. Again, primetime slot on ABC, guys. And we got the return of Kevin Durant after the Achilles, his dynamic duo with Kyrie Irving, the coaching debut in Steve Nash. We see the Celtics try to make it back with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and against that backcourt that is Kyrie and Kevin Durant. But again, you guys know my watch factor here is going to be Kevin Durant, obviously. <laughs> does one step back wet jumper i'm gonna be i'm gonna know everything's gonna be all right <laughs> and it's gonna be okay um but my excitement level i'm gonna go oh, what did i do for the warriors and bucks i gave them a five damn it ah mm-hmm. uh, you, you can go five i'll again. give this one a four Maybe mm-hmm. I'll, yeah yeah this is a four or five four or five for me right. it is five I think i'm leaning towards five it's all right nothing but, wrong with that i am going to give this game to the nets okay i am I want to see them get their get this Christmas Day dub. I think um, this is also a five for me. I'm super excited for this game because, you know, the Boston Celtics are a legitimate um, caliber franchise and team. So it's a nice it's a nice one for the Nets to be playing their second game against. And it's on the road, even though there's no no fans or whatever at at Boston. I love that. Of course, we want to know, will Kyrie be burning Sage again, um, you know, prior to this game? All good, Kyrie. Nothing wrong with getting those that bad juju out of there. Um, look, I, I think the one thing I'll be watching for is, again, Kevin Durant and what he looks like um, and what really, what the offense looks like with KD, Kyrie, and the pieces that orbit them, right? Because in many ways, right? Those two guys are the sun, right? Like it's just they are they they exhibit so much wattage. How are the three guys that share the court with them? And again, not just the guys who start with them, but the ones when Kerr, Kerr excuse me, when Steve Nash is juggling his lineups and he puts different guys in. How do they all play off of each other? We saw some encouraging signs in the preseason and in their first game, but it's a work in progress. How will it continue to develop? You know. I think just to be contrary to you, we don't have the same picks. I'm going to pick Boston to win this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if the Nets if the Nets win this game. Right? Yeah, I couldn't pick out like a. There wasn't an evident clear winner to me, honestly. <laughs> I mean, we've really never seen this Nets team. Uh, right. I mean, we like, we, we see in preseason, but of course, preseason is not the same as you know regular season. Right. Exactly. Okay. Next matchup because this is another exciting one maybe i didn't think maybe this isn't such a lackluster christmas day um (laughs) at the lakers guys 8 p.m this is also going to be on abc and espn so there's no reason you guys shouldn't catch this one Mm -hmm. all right we have the reigning nba champions in the lakers and then obviously we can't sleep on the mavs because they have luca and porzingis so this this is going to be a three for me, um, just because, no, yeah, a three. Um, I expect these two teams to show out. I expect the stars to be starring out, if you if you will. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with the Lakers. Are gonna, I think the Lakers are going to take it. And the thing that I will be watching is the matchup in LeBron and Luka. Mm-hmm. I, I love to see these two. It's really seeing the face of the game staring at the new face of the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. people love the comparisons between these two. They The ceiling is so high for Luka. So, yeah, I'm going to look. That's my it factor. LeBron and Luka going head to head. I want to see it. Yeah, so this game is a this is a five for me. I'm very excited for this game. Super, super pumped. Um, the one thing I'm going to be watching is the Dallas Mavericks others and their offense. Um, yeah, Luka's going to have a high usage rate this season, especially early on with no Chris Tapps Porzingis. The return of Dwight Powell. How does he look? How does Tim Hardaway Jr. help this team? Dorian Finney Smith. You know, I, I want to see these other pieces and new acquisition Josh Richardson, who uh, took was taking the place of Seth Curry. Uh, look. We talked about it on our last episode that the early narrative favorite is, in fact, Luka Doncic uh, for, for MVP. I want to see on the Christmas Day Showcase game against 
still the reigning best player in the world, LeBron James. How does Luka take to that big stage? He's got a flair for the dramatic and understands moments, right? It isn't some like, you know, mythical wrestling the torch away. It's nothing like that. But does he on that big stage do that and does he outshine, right? And how, do, how does he elevate his teammates uh, around him? So I'm going to pick the, uh, the, the Mavericks in this one. Oh, I like that. Okay. Uh, guys, last but not least, this is an exciting one. Hopefully you didn't eat too much or drink too much wine if you're 21 and older <laughs> because th this is going to be a good one. 1030 on ESPN, the Clippers at the Nuggets. And if you have chills going down your spine, it's probably because you have PTSD from the Western Conference <laughs> semifinal series where the Denver Nuggets overcame a 3-1 deficit and rallied to eliminate the Clippers. And it was out of control. It was bizarre. And now this is really the NBA is putting the Clippers on TV to watch them not fail hopefully because <laughs> this is a test this is a damn test and also fun fact this is also the first national TV look at the Nuggets mm -hmm. the Nuggets mm -hmm. never get this kind of spot yeah like, yeah ever yeah, so, yeah that's right Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic let's go time to step up now the it factor for me, I think I said this was a five, um, excitement level. It factor for me is going to be Jamal Murray and um, Nikola Jokic. I I just want another taste of the greatness of Jamal Murray. I want to see him do this now consistently in the regular season, moving past the bubble and the excitement and the anticipation of all of that inside there. I want to know that I can believe in Jamal Murray after that series. So I think this is a crucial season for him. I want to see him show out on Christmas Day. And I am going to give this, though, to the Clippers. Mm -hmm. And if they don't win, <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> so this game's a five I'm for me also. I, I love the rematch. Look, the NBA schedule makers really know how to play up certain things. Um, I love it. And it's, <laughs> it's at Denver. Uh, so I, I do love that. The altitude up there, it'll, it'll be great. The one thing I'm going to be looking Ooh. for is on the Clippers side, does their offense look any different than it looked in uh, last season under Doc Rivers? Does Ty Lue implement anything different, right? Um, are there any subtle actions and subtle things that make them a little bit more less predictable than maybe perhaps uh, last season's offense? And we know what Paul George said about not being used correctly by Doc, but you know, listen, Paul, stop trying to make, you know, blame people and use scapegoats. You were shooting shots off the backboard, my guy. Like let's look off the side of the backboard. Excuse me. Let's not. Let's let's not. Let's stop wilding out here. Um, you know, you you, you got to take some accountability and step up for some things. But I do want to see what Ty Lue does specifically. Anything different offensively for them? Look, everything you said about the Nuggets is right. Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic were excellent. We already know Nikola Jokic will do what he does. He's already been an All NBA performer. Can Jamal Murray? Was that just a bubble mirage? Or is he ready now to be a consistent player like he was? Because I'll tell you this. If Murray plays for the regular season like he did in the bubble, and I don't mean scoring 50 points. I just mean the consistency. I mean, yeah. he's an all-star. And now the Nuggets are a... I mean, they're already really good and a contender. They're a real problem now. Okay? Um, and, of course, you know I love Michael Porter Jr. I want to see what he looks like. You know, uh, Bull Bull is, is getting some, some run now. His contract was, was guaranteed. Uh, just before the start of the season. These are the things I want to see from the Nuggets. But look, on this big stage, the Clippers are going to have that nasty taste in their mouth because look, they were embarrassed. Let's be real. Up 3-1 and you had double-digit leads in all the closeout games and you frittered it away. So they're going to come out and look to have a statement and have something to prove. So I like the Clippers uh, going away in this one. Yes, I love it. And real quick uh, on the topic of the Clippers, did you happen to catch Kawhi Leonard on Kimmel? Uh, I, um, I, I only saw like people talking about it. I don't know what he said. I was crying. I just It's Kawhi. I mean, who <laughs> put him on late night television? <laughs> it was incredible. But that's not Kawhi. That's so not Kawhi. So... <laughs> Um, Jimmy Kimmel real quick was asking him about his hands and everything. And he was like, when did you notice that like you weren't like the rest of us? He was like, where's your hands? And Kawhi's sitting there and he just 
screwing his hands up into the camera. And obviously you can't see anything else because his hands are huge. And he's like, yeah, you know, I don't know about when I was a baby because, you know, I wouldn't remember that. But I did notice that they were bigger when I just couldn't even fit my hands in my pockets. <laughs> or do things like other normal people. I was I was crying. It was hysterical. No. I, you guys got to check it out. And, and I imagine it was Kawhi and his deadpan delivery like he usually does, right? And it's just, he, that's the thing. Like, Kawhi actually, guys, is sneaky, pretty funny. Like, you know, like, but he yes. he totally plays into this whole, like, I don't talk, I'm a monotone, I'm a robot. Like, he totally plays into it. And look, this is so much of the league that what we love that makes it so fun because these guys are so entertaining and they're, such characters and personalities. It, it, it's really cool. Um, Jenna, let's recap for the people so they know how to keep score because, you know, that's what this thing is all about. Like, who who ultimately ends up being right? We had a lot of same picks, but we got enough differences, so it'll it'll be good to see. I think I am, in fact, winning the overall battle, I, I believe. But anyway, we'll start back at the top. For Pelicans Heat, you had the Pelicans. I picked the Heat. Warriors Bucks, we both picked the Bucks, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Nets Celtics, you picked the Nets, I picked the Celtics. Mavericks Lakers, you went Lakers, I went Mavs, we both went the Clippers. So essentially, we are going head to head in the Mavs Lakers game and the Nets Celtics game. Oh, and the Pelicans Heat. So those are those three matchups are the ones we're going head to head. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited! I can't wait to text you and annoy you so hard <laughs> during. The yeah, it'll be like the first quarter. Like your team will be up ten nothing, and I'll be like, "All right, calm down. Like it's the first quarter. Like we can't, oh, we can't wait more time." Did you, <laughs> did you see what LeBron did? did you see? Did you see? But folks, That's a real life um, reaction of me in Gerard's text messages. It, it is. It's like LeBron, 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 and I'm like, great. <laughs> He's like, you need to calm down. You need to calm down over there. But it's LBJ. Yeah, we know. Oh, we wait know. till Space Jam comes out. Oh, you know, well, you listen, guess who will not be watching Space Jam 2? This guy right here. Anyway, folks, that was our Christmas preview special and the last episode for us of 2020. We'll be back, of course, in 2021. The NBA season is going to be in full, in full swing as it is right now. And we'll be back with weekly content for you guys. So to all of you and your families, wishing you all a happy, healthy holiday season. A peaceful and safe new year. Hopefully 2021 is, you know, better for everyone. <laughs> uh, you know, after that after that rough 2020. And as always. Ooh, you know what? I, I do have to say real quick. Um, you know, you two guys, thank you for listening and sticking with mm -hmm. us. And honestly, it is a, just a blessing that we all made it, baby. <laughs> yeah. We are here. We're here. We it. And that's that. No doubt. Guys, you know where all to right, find guys. us. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, at 7 Footers Pod on Twitter, at 7 Footers Podcast on Instagram, at JS Hector, at Gentleman and Sully. Have a really, really awesome holiday season, and we will see you guys in 2021. Peace. Spent a couple years out here with these raps Trying to have a plan that we may come true Plotted some jobs but I ain't hit back I don't want to trap, what's a man gonna do? Chevy told me come